I'm back going at it, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you going on this maiden voyage with me. Uh, this was the first episode that I did live. I'm actually recording this to let you guys know because I'm still figuring out the format of this thing. It's important that you guys provide feedback down in the comments because this show is going to look a lot different than it does in due time. In a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, this show is going to look totally different. But I do invite you to join me Sunday through Thursday right here on YouTube and on Twitch at 10 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to go from 10 to 11. Uh, some days the shows will be 30 minutes. Some days will be 45 minutes. But this show is meant to be just an amalgamation of the day that allows you to get caught up on stuff and have some fun while doing it. Uh, you can find time codes down below for all the topics down there. And I would love to hear your thoughts on if I should break this up into individual segments or just keep it one long video so you guys can watch along during your lunch break or uh, whenever you're driving in the car. You know, don't be watching the car, just listen in the car. But uh, just to hang out with me throughout the day. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Enjoy the show. Oh, do me a favor. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Of course, we're trying to grow a little bit. Hit the thumbs up button. Thanks. I know it's late, but here we are. And I couldn't be more excited to be hanging out with you guys tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five nights in a row, 10 p.m. Central Time. We are live over on Twitch and on YouTube. The following day, the entire broadcast posted with timestamps. What timestamps? What effort? Oh my God, it's going to be good. It's going to be great. You need to know why I'm here. The biggest question I'll probably get is what happened to your other project you're working on? It's still happening. It's still going on. But I missed you. I missed this. I miss chatting. I miss looking at the chat. I miss coming together with friends on a day-to-day, night-to-night basis and just busting some internet ass. I said before, well, I'm done talking about video games. I am. I'm done talking about video games. I don't really want to talk about video games anymore. The video game uh, world is extremely toxic. I don't, I don't have time for that shit. I don't have time to deal with all that nonsense. I don't have time. I look at it and I say, that's not me anymore. That's not me. I don't want to deal with that nonsense. Why aren't you with anybody else? Because here's the thing, I gotta, gotta be honest, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna deal with anybody else. I wanna deal with you, I wanna deal with me. I wanna build something together. And I, I, maybe in time, we'll add somebody to this. But right now, this is the Stuttering Craig Show featuring you, featuring you, and you are just, you're a huge part of this thing. I'm going down my, going down my list of things. Do we have goals? Absolutely, we have goals. Our goals is to grow, be consistent, and day by day, share. Let people know what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. One other thing about going solo versus with a group. I've been there. I've done the group thing. But I've never focused in on me. I've never focused in on this. Just you and us together, right? You see things like G4 with insane production value. Insane production value. And their content sucks ass because people hate them. They hate them. And you know what? That's fine because they're unlikable schmucks, all right? That's one thing you can expect from me, absolute honesty. I will give you, be, be totally transparent with you. I'll be absolute honest with you. I'll give you 100 every single show. I'm gonna be streaming Sunday through Thursday from now until August 1st. August 1st, I'm, I'm gonna use like 20 days of streaming to figure this out, figure out this format, figure out how I like it, what you guys like. He's on fire. Uh, thank you, Tim Kitzrow. Uh, and just figure this out. August 1st, I'm going to, I'm going to my, with my family to Hawaii and I'm not, I'm not doing anything. It's been a pre-planned trip. I'm going to Hawaii and go F everybody. I can't wait. I'm going, going to the beach. All right. It's been a long time plan. The whole thing cost us $50. Don't ask me how, but we're going on the cheap, baby. I love it. All right. So we're going out there for a week and then I'm going to get back. And the best thing about it is what I'm super excited about is I'm going to be coming back in, sliding on in right in time for the NFL season, week one. You will get sports. You will get entertainment. You'll get whatever the fuck I want to talk about, all right? And you know what, when I have guests on, it's gonna be the exact same thing, all right? What is this show? It's like guy talk, person talk, regular fun talk, all right? We're just hanging out, all right? We're talking about things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, and we can do this because we have every night to share together, and that, gets my dick hard.
So let's talk about expectations here. My expectations, things that you should expect from me, things that you should expect from yourself and I expect of you. First off, let's talk about the expectations of me. Here's what you got. Expectations of me, consistent streams and videos. Streams, like I said, Sunday through Thursday, 10 p.m. Central Time, videos Monday through Friday. You're getting the entire thing posted, the entire episode posted, so you can watch the whole thing with timestamps. And I probably am gonna break down individual segments depending on how it goes. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna happen. Like I said, it's gonna, as you see on the bottom, always changing slash growing. Number two, honesty and transparency. I promise you, I promise you, you are gonna get my honest thoughts on things. When you ask me a question, I will give you my honest opinion, all right? This is not sugar-coated. I'm not, I'm not giving you some sort of sugar-coated little, little version. I'm gonna give you one hundo every single time. Nothing is off topic. All right, nothing. Like if you guys want to talk, ask my question, ask me about something gaming related, I'll gladly give you give you my. But I'm not an expert in gaming anymore. I, I that, that's that's a part of my past, but I'll gladly provide you with input however I can. Look, I'm just some schmuck online hanging out with my friends. All right, and we're gonna grow and add new friends every single day. That is the goal here. That is the goal. And as I said, last expectation for me that this will always be changing and always be growing. You got it. Good. All right. So the questions are, what are my expectations of you? Good luck. I think it's important, right? I've known a lot of you guys for a long time, long time. I've been online for 16 years, 16 stinking years since 2006. And some of you have been with me for that entire time. And some people have dropped off off the face of the earth because they think I'm a douchebag. Okay, that's fine. But I still have expectations of you. So here they are. I want you to be here. Number one. Number one, you're here. Number two, you're enthusiastic and engaged. You can have me on in the background, that's fine, but you're listening. You're being a part of it. Number three, you take care of your house. This is your house. You take care of the people, your family, your friends while you're here. And that also aligns with number four, don't be a dick. It's very simple, very simple rules. I don't ask a whole lot of you. That's all I ask, all right? Take care of your house, all right? Water the plants. Let people know this is happening. Right, like, watch, subscribe, support. That's it. Very simple. All right. If you guys, you can support however you want. Whether that's sharing the show, whether it's getting out there, whether it's super chatting, super thanking, uh, bits, subscriptions over on Twitch, they're all gravy. So this is what this is what I've done. I've compiled a list of a lot of things that I've caught up on throughout the day, and we're going to go over those things, things that I care about, that I think you will care about, and we're going to go through each one of them. It's going to be super fun. I encourage you to post down in the comments if you're watching this afterwards or post a live stream to let me know what you'd like to see me talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. I wanna keep things topical. I wanna think, keep things relevant. Um, like I said, I, it can be sports, it can be entertainment, it can be whatever the hell we wanna talk about. It's all on the table, right? We're not living in ourselves to anything. All right, let's get into it. I think we'd start off today with the best thing I saw today over here from our, my boy, John Boy Media. If you haven't seen this, you gotta see it. Yes, we're starting off with sports, and that is done for a reason, because I fucking want to. <laughs> Here we go. If you haven't seen this, this is spectacular. Watch what happens in this Little League World Series game as we go along. Oh! Absolutely spectacular. The boy takes one straight to the forehead. But what happens next is crazy. Boy takes it to the head, right on the temple. Backs down, takes his base. Tough as nails. Holy crap. If you've ever been in a situation where you've hurt another kid, look what happens right here. This kid, noticing what's happening, steps off the base as the pitcher is shooken up. So this is really cool because as a pitcher, comforts the pitcher. Shaken up right now because of what he did. And look at Zay Jarvis. This is such great sportsmanship. Here's the best thing about this. Listen to what he says as the coach walks up with the mic on. This is important. This is why sports is amazing. This is this this is top tier. He wants him to know that it's okay, that he'll be fine. Hey, bro. Look at me. Look at me. You're all right. Amazing. You're all right. Look at me. Hey, look, look. Kid is shooken up. We got moms crying out here, soccer moms, baseball moms crying because what's going on? Look, I'm telling you, beautiful, 
absolutely lovely. I love everything about what I just saw. Outside of the kid getting plugged in the head, it's one of those things where you see you see that happen, and the first thing you thought is, "Oh shit, is the kid okay?" And then then you see what happens afterwards, it, and just seeing a kid going up and comforting another kid in the Little League World Series, just it, 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 more than anything, it just warms my freaking heart. You know, it's with all the nonsense happening in the world, with all that, with, with with all this crap happening that, and and you're constantly hearing all the all the bad things that happen in the world. It takes a freaking 10 or 11 year old kid, 12 year old kid to step off, to hug his opponent in the biggest stage of their lives at this point to go, man, hey, you're doing great. I'm okay. It's okay. It'll be all right. It's amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. And look, I, I, th I think that's one of those things, uh, the absolute best things about sports and why I absolutely love sports. Why I absolutely love sports. And I think that's amazing, amazing stuff. If you haven't seen it, like I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to go watch the Little League, Little League World Series. It's awful baseball. It's awful baseball. <laughs> but but you get these wonderful little moments that in, that totally in, encompass sports in the best way possible, and that is absolutely one of them. And I would just like to point out that the kid was from Texas East. What does that mean? I don't quite know. Probably somewhere out in the middle of Tyler, Texas, or something like that. All right. <laughs> and as I said, there's no crying in baseball. Levy points that out over in the chat. Let me just point this out. Tomorrow. I got something to show you because there's no crying in baseball except for what I'm going to show you tomorrow. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because I have something that is going to drive you effing crazy. Effing crazy. I can't freaking wait to show it to you because I saw it tonight and it drove me freaking crazy. So I'm going to show you it tomorrow. Look, this is all, it's not, not, not only is going to be rainbow and butterflies here on, on, on the Stutter and Craig show. All right. But, <laughs> but. You will have fun. You will have fun. All right, let's get to the second thing on my list today that I want to share with you guys. Once again, the, uh, the discussion is wide open in the chat. Head down there and let me know what you're thinking. Uh, and uh, let me know what you think about these things in the comments because this is, uh, there's going to be so much. Like I said, this is going to be like eight to 10 things on a, uh, on a show, to show, show to show basis. It's things that pop up in my feed throughout the day that I want to share with you to get you caught up on the day to day so you guys can uh, go to bed feeling good about yourself and feeling good about life, unless things just absolutely suck. Number two on my list. Oh my God, can I be more excited about this? <laughs> oh my God. Have I told you that I'm excited about Cobra Kai? Season five coming out this year. Just announced today, Cobra Kai season five. First look, the return of Mike Barnes from Karate Kid 3. Here we go. We have Johnny over here. It's kind of cropped off, whatever. We have Daniel in the middle. Then we got, was it Chozo over from uh, over from uh, Karate Kid 2 coming in? He's now one of the good guys. They got the good guys here. And they're taking on Terry Silver, who's called in all the bad guys. Of course, we got the kids. They're all happy. They're joining forces. We've got Hawk, who's not Hawk anymore. He's back to Eli. He's got the daughter over here. And you got this guy looking at the butt or something like that. That's all good and dandy. Let's check out, these are all screenshots coming in. Then we have over here the battle of, of, of girls. They're fighting out over in Cobra Kai with some fancy lighting in the background because Cobra Kai is advancing. They're spreading throughout the valley. But oh my God, dare I show you? Mike Barnes is back and he looks so evil. Evil. Oh my God. Look at this. Just that sheer face of intensity. The bad boy is back. I'm telling you, this, this, here's my thoughts on where Cobra Kai is going. I think that Cobra Kai, at the end of season five, it's going to be like doomsday. Absolute doomsday. Mike Barnes is, is leading the charge on top of, of what is happening you know, in the valley. Cobra Kai is reigning supreme. And then to finish up, because my understanding, Cobra Kai has six seasons planned. It is my understanding, this is my thought, is that Hillary Swank comes back in season six and puts it said everybody's in the, in the Miyagi Do universe. Hillary Swain comes in, ties it up, gives Mike Barnes a big old sweet chin music straight to the jaw over there, done some, some weird kata thing. Then they they all end up around Mr. Miyagi's grave, and they all have shots of shots of uh, sake, and they're breaking ice and stuff right in front of his grave. And that's how the series is. It's going to be glorious. They're all going to do it together. I can't wait. So anyway, season five of Cobra Kai <laughs> drops later this year because the fourth season, I believe, started launched in like January this year. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. I am so freaking excited for that. So freaking excited for this. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. And they bring back Jonathan Brandis from Sidekicks with Chuck Norris. Because why not? Because why the hell not? I love everything about that. I love everything about that. <laughs> Jonathan Brandis, rest in peace. Speaking of rest in peace, let's go to story number three today. This is a request from the comment section of my, uh, my video, what's going on. Man, let's go. Olivia Newton-John passed away, died at, died at the age of 73. Uh, the reason I bring back Olivia, Olivia Newton-John, because man, what a stone cold fox she was. Even till 73, man, what a beautiful girl. Sandy from, uh, from, the, from Greece, golly, what a, what a beautiful woman she was. Beautiful, smart. She, uh, like, that, that's the famous scene where she like flies off and <laughs> goes off into the, the clouds or something at the end of Greece. So weird, so weird. She ends up passing away from, I, I believe, cancer. But what a like beautiful, smart, total all-American girl. Uh, and uh, let's get physical. I mean, come on, one of the best songs ever. This, this song, by the way, would be absolutely seen as problematic today because, you know, people are fat in it. And, and apparently being fat is a good thing now. So, uh, but yes, she's over here and like, you got fat guys in the background. She, I, you know, I gotta be honest. I'm so, I, I, I gotta be, someone has to be out there like trying to cancel Olivia Newton-John, right? Somebody has to be out there trying to cancel her even though she passed on today because Let's Get Physical was problematic. But uh, it, was, it obviously sucks to see people go, but if I, I'm gonna be really honest. I didn't know Olivia Newton-John was alive, but it's always good to go back and look at, uh, in retrospect on their career and give them their, uh, their, their day in the sun. Uh, big ups to Olivia Newton-John. Uh, super, super great career. Uh, and uh, shamed all the fat guys into getting thin in case you, you know, didn't know that at the end. Let's get one more picture of Le Olivia Newton-John. I don't remember that, but, you know, that's a great picture. All right. <laughs> all right. Look, we started with a little bit of sports. And let's let's bring it on in. Like, by the way, can you can you tell this show is meant to be incredibly fast paced and fun? I, I I hope I hope that you guys are getting this. And I don't I, I'm not quite sure how much chat interaction we're gonna have, which is really weird for me because I'm so used to chat interaction. But I want to be able to keep this in under an hour so people can watch on a day to day basis. Which is why at the very tail end I'll read off donations and bits and super chats and and subs and things like that. So um, hopefully you guys are up with the fast paced nature of this because I want to be able to hit things quick hit. And this is kind of like a new, like top eight, top 10 stories of the day that, that you guys should be caught up on. Uh, this is kind of a, uh, it's been, I've, I've asked, been asked about this quite a bit. Been asked about this quite a bit. Slam ball's coming back. About to set a return in 2023 after a long hiatus. Uh, slam balls. So this picture has got to be from like 2002 or 2003. This is LaMonica Garrett, uh, by the way. If you don't know who, know who LaMonica Garrett is, he's actually an actor. If you've seen uh, the show Reacher, no, not Reacher, Jack Ryan, whatever it is, it's, it's, the, it's the new, uh, no, the Kill List, the Terminal List. If you've seen Term Terminal List, he's the, uh, the, the Black Admiral guy who, uh, who, you know, you find out good stuff. Anyways, that's LaMonica Garrett. He's now like old, right? This is when he was young. So they have still like these promo pictures from a long time ago. So Slam Ball is coming back. They talked to Mason, Mason Gordon, who is the guy who kind of conceptualized Slam Ball. Now I'm getting all sorts of like mixed messages here. It says, Gordon originally came back, came up with the idea of Slam Ball in 1999. I've never heard that before. I, I've never heard that before. I heard it was like, you know, but whatever. I know it was, it was live in 2002 and 2003. I played in the 2003 season. And uh, I've seen a lot of questions about, am I, you know, would I go back? Would I be an owner of a team? Would I uh, play or coach? I certainly would never play. In an ideal world, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'd love to do. I would love to be a color commentator for Slam Ball. I would love to be the ex-player who comes in and helps tell the story of the new players and, uh, or, or coach or coach one of the two. I would think that would be absolutely amazing because I, I get it. I know this game. If you guys know anything about me, I, I was really uh, into the idea of the levitation league, this uh, basketball, which is kind of like a, a new version of, of uh, slam ball that, that I was uh, really behind about, about 18, 18 months, two years ago. I was really into that idea, uh, but it just cost a lot of money, but I would love to get back attached to a slam ball in some way, shape or form. Um, I was actually approached to be an owner of a team uh, and, and buy, buy a franchise of Slam Ball probably about three or four years ago, but the price tag was just way too hefty. If you guys know about what, uh, what they're asking about with Screw Attack, 
it, it was more than that. So, uh, and I, I was like, well, how do you, <laughs> how do you, how does that make sense at all? But uh, I think that would be super fun to do. Uh, but I don't know anything about this other than the articles saying that slam ball is coming back and that 2023 it's happening. I will say this, um, this line here, the younger audience are really out, are out there looking like, what, uh, what sport can I call my own? Because a lot of them are, aren't watching two and a half hour, three hour broadcast anymore. That, that, that's been the same thought process with Slam Ball since the start. My first question, if they, were to, if they were to approach me about being a part of Slam Ball is, are you building a sport or are you building a TV show? Because if you're building a TV show, I don't want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of a sport. I, I, that's the biggest thing. And Slam Ball the first time was a TV show then with the hopes of it becoming a sport. And I think that's my fear with what everything that's been said in this is so far is that they're building a TV show with it, the intention of it being a sport. Because if you're a good enough sport, I think you being a TV show comes secondary, right? You can find ways. The NFL has a three-hour block, right? And if they go over their three-hour block, you know what? It's okay because they're the freaking NFL. Same with the NBA. Same with the NHL. Same with baseball, right? You're buying the sport and the broadcast works around how good the sport is. I don't think you should be, be nurturing the sport around through the broadcast. You should, you should just make the sport good enough to fit in to where people are willing to sit down and watch two and a half hour, three hour, two and a half to three hour broadcast. Now, slam ball will never be two and a half to three hours long, but you could absolutely do a couple games in like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I think that'd absolutely be great. So, <sighs> all right, man, let's go. Let's stink and go. Are you guys having fun? With this, I hopefully you guys are. If you guys made it this far, do me a favor, watching over on YouTube, hit the live, uh, hit the uh, thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Uh, I am uh, loving doing this with you guys tonight. Once again, I will. Uh, I, I, this is a total refresh of everything that I'm doing. Uh, the branding that you see will be different. The broadcast will be different. Everything about this will be different, and I'm gonna need your help. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. All right, let's stick with sports a little bit. I saw this today. Apparently, Marshawn Lynch was arrested in Las Vegas for DWI. And while I think that's incredibly unfortunate, what's not is his mugshot. Let's freaking go. <laughs> if that doesn't scream, Marshawn Lynch, my lord. That is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, come on. He is... Drunk high as a skunk. I mean, at like, if you can't get your, get like, it, let's, see, let's see. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my Marshawn Lynch. I love everything about that. Man, it's right. This guy loves some Skittles, doesn't he? Yeah, you got popped a few too, few too many Skittles there. I love that. <laughs> and he's in Vegas too. I mean, do you know, do you know how drunk you have to be in Vegas to get, like a D, well, I guess to be a DWI. I mean, if you're driving while intoxicated, that's a pretty bad thing. But my lord, I mean, you you got to be this, you got to be Marshawn Lynch drunk to be pulled over. <laughs> that is insane. All right, let's go to another quick one, real fast. All right, I, I think this is absolutely fascinating. Going from one intoxication to another. So, Green Bay Packers quarterback, four time MVP Aaron Rodgers, like multiple time MVP Aaron Rodgers. I think it's four times. He's he's like a stud, right? He was people got all pissed at him last year because he was uh because he he didn't want to get the vaccine and and he's unvaccinated and people were pissed. Well, anyways, over this over uh like not this summer but the previous summer, he went out and he had this he went on and he, he was he went on like this spirit spirit quest and used this hallucinogenic drink called ayahuasca, right? Apparently it's one of those drinks that you go on like the spirit trip, right? And he says that was, he, he was in, a, uh, in Peru in 2020 before the third of his fourth MVP season. So he's won the MVP the last two seasons, right? Or, or like, I think he was the MVP last season. Like, that's the thing about MVP is like, who really remembers going into the next season? Like, who even won the Super Bowl last year? The Rams. The Rams did. That's right. Of course they did. But either way. Uh, but anyways, the NFL found that he was not in the violation of the drug policy because I don't think that they went in and like, you can get in trouble for weed and ecstasy and crack and whatever, but if you're going to if you're going to Peru and you're having ayahuasca and you go on a spirit journey, you're okay. Ayahuasca. Okay, thank you, Dandy sixty four. I like I like you guys in the chat. You guys are like it's pronounced ayahuasca, Craig. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I love everything about that. Um, and, and the fact that they, they asked his coach, 
uh, LaFleur, Matt LaFleur, they said, oh, you know, do you have any, uh, any uh, concerns the league might discipline Rodgers? He's like, I really haven't given it much thought at all. <laughs> Rodgers said on this podcast he was on that the retreat gave him, quote, a deep and meaningful appreciation of life and added that, quote, I came back and knew I was never going to be the same. Look, can I be really transparent with you guys? I'm going to be really transparent with you guys. I, I've, I've never smoked weed, right? I, I certainly know what it smells like. I mean, we, we did our, our Vegas meetup a, a few weeks ago. Look, that thing, that, that, uh, that smell is all over the place. Literally, as soon as you get out of the airport in Vegas, you smell weed. But I never smoked weed. But I am incredibly intrigued by the idea of going on some spiritual quest and unlocking all these crazy thoughts in my brain and go to go into some hype, some, some next plane of existence and seeing like your relatives from 37 generations ago as they speak to you and you see the, you know, marshmallow men talking to you and stuff like that stuff is fascinating to me. Like I, if anybody has ever done that, please tell me about your experience because I will read them all in the comments. I, I, I am fascinated, absolutely fascinated by that. It is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. <laughs> oh man, Travis says, no, nah, you don't want to do that because when, when they try to eat you, that's right. Appar apparently they like, it, I don't know. I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day. Uh, I, I went down, I had to go down to uh, Houston and then I came back. So I had three hours down, three hours back coming from, coming from Dallas. And, uh, on the way down, I listened to an Elon Musk podcast on the way back. I listened to Joe Rogan talking to a guy about UFOs and they, and, and they kind of did a side side topic where they were talking about uh, like DMT trips. I don't even know what DMT means, but apparently it's, you know, it's like mushrooms and stuff. And they talk about these spiritual, ex like spiritual uh, experiences that they have. And like I said, I've never done any of that stuff, but it is intriguing to me. <laughs> it is intriguing to me just because I, I think as I get older, I, I feel more in touch with and, and more in touch with my spirituality. And that, that stuff is really, really fascinating just to think about, just to think about. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that stuff in the, in the, uh, in the comments. Let's, let's go, let's go one more quick, quick hit on Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the most obvious statement of the day, Aaron Rodgers, by the way, this is a headline in ESPN. Why is this a headline in ESPN? It's so freaking stupid. Aaron Rodgers doesn't, doesn't see quote, any benefit to playing one series in a preseason game of freaking course, because you know, he's like a four-time MVP, so why the hell should he even think about touching a football until week one of the season? It's such, such it's like so stupid. Like people like Aaron Rodgers, who have seen so much success in their life, they've seen so much success, but they have a bullseye on them at all times. At all times. And even when they say things like, hey, you know, it doesn't really benefit any uh, to play at all, people go, Oh, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that. What do you think about that? And everybody in the NFL goes, Shut the fuck up. You're right. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, this is more of a personal thing. And by the way, someone in the chat says, is this, a, is, this a, is this a slow news day? Kind of. But the reason why I'm starting this once again is because sports are picking up. My kids are back in school. They start school tomorrow. And now we get to hang out with each other every single night, Sunday through Thursday. Sunday through Thursday with YouTube's, YouTube uh, episodes on Monday through Friday. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is a close personal thought, thought here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to be fully transparent on this. Fully transparent. I think the WNBA is, as, is, is absolutely trash basketball, right? I realize that these women are trying their best, but you cannot hide the fact that it just hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. It's been 25 stinking years, and it hasn't been successful. It's a league that is subsidized by the NBA, right? It does a fraction of the ratings, a fraction of the attendance. The players are paid a fraction of the NBA players as they should be because they haven't been able to grow the sport over 25 years. So out comes this article today. Los Angeles Sparks standout, whatever her name is, addresses WA's continued travel issues that quote must be remedied. Okay. The long, I'm going to save you a lot on here, save you a lot of, of time reading and me talking about this. Long and short of it is they were, on, they were in an airport, their flight was delayed. She thinks that needs to change because she's important, right? Their flight was delayed. Never mind the fact that in every airport, in every city, in America right now, they are seeing ridiculous travel issues, ridiculous travel issues of delays. I was just in Utah two, three weeks ago. We had two cancellations after three delays. We ended up staying overnight, right? It happens, especially with today. You have people who are getting fired for, for decisions they're not making. You're having people getting laid off. You get, I mean, it, like you have people calling in sick. 
like there's fuel shortages. Like these are things that the airline was telling me about the situation. They're like, oh, it's bad, right? And it is bad. Guess what? For everybody. But you play in the WNBA and you're important. For reference, I pulled up this article from 1991. From 1991, NBA teams flying chartered skies. They have an average salary of over $1 million. They are paid $55 a day meal money when they travel. They sit in first-class sections on planes, and they stay in first-class hotels. But nowadays, there's even more motivation to play in the NBA charter flying. Let me just say this. The NBA just passed its 75th season. 75th season. Some quick math. Mm, let's see. It started in the 1950s or so. 1948, I'm guessing, somewhere around there. Right? This was in 1991. So quick math there. Eh, roughly 45 seasons before the NBA started chartering, chartering things, uh, planes for their, for their players. Charles Barkley in an article I found. Charles Barkley saying, hey, man. Oh, I got to refresh that one. Charles Barkley came out. I found an article from a long time ago where Charles Barkley saying in, the, in his first, first few years in the league, they were, they were like staying overnight in hotels uh, or in, uh, in airports. They're sleeping in, in airports. They're flying coach, right? Like this is, this is Charles Barkley, one of the most dominant players in NBA history, right? Now best commentators ever. He's talking about this is, this is in the late 80s. This is happening. Late 80s, early 90s. So I got to be honest. I'm going to say this really clear. Really clear so everybody can hear me all the way in the back. Los Angeles Sparks standout, Nenka Ogawinki. Shut the fuck up. Well, now we'll do one quick sports thing, then I'll get into uh, one other. You know, you know what I need to do a better job of? And this is, the, I'm going to take a mental note of this. Telling you what's on the show at the beginning of the show. Like I said, we're going to figure this thing out as we go. But this is going to be great. Let's, 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 let's take a look at this. This is a video. Of the uh, man, we you're getting beat over the head with sports because, like I said, I'm I'm sports up right now. Uh, if you haven't seen this, this is great. Case Keenum, quarterback for the Bills, he goes undercover. Let's take let's take a watch. Case Keenum here. I'm gonna see today how many autographs I can get from my teammates. Let's go Bills. All right, so we've all seen them. The autograph the autograph hunters going out, <laughs> asking their favorite players, the guys like my age or. 41 years old going, hey, uh, you're my favorite player, 22-year-old guy. I love you so much. Will you sign this football? Let's see what happens. This is great. Hey, Isaiah, man, can I get your autograph, man? I've been a big fan of yours, man. Ever since you was in college, man. <laughs> Will you do it one more time? <laughs> he, goes, he gets it once, then he goes back again. Down for me, man. It's kind of hard to read. Is this case? <laughs> <laughs> then he notices them. That's great stuff. Hey, guys, I get your autograph, man. Hey, man, you're my favorite player, man. Watch how he gets brushed off. Okay, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> he gets in, and that's what you expect from from these players, man. This is great, great stuff. Good look out there, man. Taps him on the butt, looks back. <laughs> what the thing is on the double look? Okay, this 2019 one still works? No, Outstanding. It doesn't work? What are you doing? Here? I'm trying to get autographs, sir. Right. He gets hit by security. Hey, Brandon Bean, man, will you get my, can I get your autograph there, man? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> he looks at him. It's going to be great. I'll be looking good this year, man. I'm about to say, what the hell? Rocky, will you sign this for me, man? I sure will. Where did Josh go? Josh go around? Okay, do I have, do I have to? Yes, you have to. He gets kicked out. He's trying to get the starting quarterback. He notices Josh Allen. That's great stuff, man. Awesome stuff. And, and like once again, when when you can when you can humanize these people like that, that's that's beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful. I, I had to share that. It's only a minute eighteen a minute eighteen long. Great stuff. Outstanding. Love 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 that. And that's why the Bills are an amazing team to watch. And you know what? They're probably going to win the Super Bowl this year. Probably are. Don't even get me started on the, on the Cowboys, by the way. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. All right. Now comes the part of the show where I talk to you about... This is like... I feel like I'm in Saturday Night Live. Now comes the part of the show where I tell you... It's like a... What's that? It's... Uh, God, was it Chris Farley? No, no, no. I think it was Mike Myers. Now comes the part of the show where we talk about my girlfriend and I tell her how much I hate her. No, it's Adam Sandler. <laughs> now comes the part of the show where I tell you about something I watched recently. It's called Trainwreck, Woodstock 99. It's a documentary on 
Netflix. Okay. We, we, could watch, we could watch the trailer or I could tell you about it. And I'll tell you, we're going to watch about 30 seconds of the trailer. Then I'm going to give you the full rundown of this thing. All right. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is the most misleading trailer probably in the history of Netflix. Let's get into this thing. This is called Trainwreck Woodstock 99. Woodstock 99. It was going to be the biggest party on the planet. But that's not what any of us remember it for. That first line is, the, is like the most misleading line in the entire thing. What the hell happened? It really felt like it was flower power and coming together in harmony. I've never seen this many people. It was peace and love and music. That All right, so this is a story about Woodstock 99, all right? All peace, love, and music until it wasn't. Go on. Later, later the show goes on. I things get a little ca crazy. It's our hurry. And you all of a sudden, there's fires all, all over the place. Absolute chaos. Acting like animals. Okay, so let me give you the quick rundown of this so you, so you don't have to watch it. Right? There's, there's a few reasons why I wanted to bring this up today. Few reasons why I want. To. I watched the three-part documentary on this. This is called Train Rock, Train Wreck, Woodstock '99. Now, the thing about this this uh, documentary, very simple. It's about something that was in intriguing to me at this time. I was 18 years old. I remember hearing about Woodstock '99. I was a senior in high school. Right. Um, this documentary follows several people who were uh, staff of Woodstock 99, the organizers of Woodstock 99, uh, who are also, uh, one of them was the organizer of the original Woodstock in 1969, as well as attendees of Woodstock 99, okay? So I'll give you the, the full story arc here. It's a big, big, uh, big story leading up to Woodstock 99. They want to re revitalize the, the fun stuff that leads up to uh, uh, why, why Woodstock 69 was so great, all the peace, love, and harmony, but it got totally corporate. They, they cut corners, and one of the biggest things they cut was security, all right? So it's absolutely crazy. Uh, at the end, uh, by, the, by the third day, uh, they, uh, they've been price gouged. All the attendees have been price gouged. Everyone's been overworked. Everyone's tired, and it's, it's this total breaking point to where uh, they get to the end of the of the entire uh, the entire uh, three day event, Red Hot Chili Peppers plays, and then after taking everybody's uh, lighters and stuff going into the event, they give every they give a hundred thousand people candles on the last set for this candlelight vigil. It was supposed to be like after Columbine, and they were supposed to talk about how uh, guns are bad and gun violence is bad and all this stuff, right? Things that we all know. So you give like a bunch of like angsty teenagers and early 20s folks a bunch of a bunch of like who are exhausted and drunk after three days of partying candles and naturally they burn the whole place effing down what the hell do you expect so there was also some things that went on there were some girls who were you know who were assaulted and it was like you know girls were had their shirts off and guys are touching them when they shouldn't have and stuff like that and they talk about all you know those bad things but there's 250,000 people at this event right and Bad shit happens. Like it happens. It's two hundred fifty thousand people, bigger than a lot of towns. Like that's a like big, almost as big as Fort Worth, Texas. Right? It's a big old city, big old city, bigger than a lot of a lot of cities in America. Right? So bad things are bound to happen, and bad things did happen. But really, what it came down to comes down to is the event was uh, poorly managed. They they tried to cut corners. And they tried to turn it into like this big profit thing, and it was called corporate stock. By the time that by the time the uh, the event was done. Um, the one thing that really caught my caught my eye while watching this was, you know, they talked about, um, you know, the the idea of of these uh, these girls being touched and and uh, and uh, some rapes happened and things that are obviously never will never be condoned, right? Uh, but they said something at, in the in the line. Uh, it, one of the one of the uh, concert goers said, "Who who is now an, an adult with with children of her own?" She says, "You know, you can say what you want about woke culture, but." But nowadays they'd be held accountable. And my thought was like, were you serious? Like, are you serious? Because if you were to get 250,000 people today together for a three day long festival in the exact same situation, just a three day long festival, the exact same shit would happen. The exact same stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know. It's, it's just, 
it's insane to think that people are, are like, well, you know, there's accountability now. They're okay, sure, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Anyways, Wrath of Wood says, they shut down concerts for a reason, dude. They actually shut down Woodstock 99 like three times. They, they had to stop the sets because things were on fire or things were going on. It was, it was crazy. It, it's nuts. But either way, I'll say this. With social media now, absolutely social media would, would, uh, would like Woodstock 99 or Woodstock 2029 or whatever it's going to be, would absolutely be lambasted. Absolutely lambasted. Okay, okay, that was a lot. I know that I threw a lot at you. We went really, really fast. Did you enjoy that? If you did, do me a favor, comment and tell me. I want your criticism. I want your feedback down below in the comments. Very important that you do. And if you did really enjoy it and your first time tuning in, hit the subscribe button and thumbs up are greatly appreciated. The more you watch, the better. Hey, remember, here's my, expect here's my expectations of you, your friend, be here. So hopefully I'll see you here tomorrow. Remember, people are going to try to keep it down. Don't let them. You guys got to go. Go get it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.